Hi, this is Beverly Lyons from the Daily Record newspaper in Scotland, and I'm here with the Attic Lights, and they are... I'm Kev. I'm Colin. Wow, that was difficult. <laughs> so what have you done with the other members of the bands today? Well, we were actually doing a wee, uh, radio thing earlier on with the five of us, but they kind of got sent home, just because it's, it's hard enough trying to speak with two people and trying to get sense. It's just two that you can handle. Yeah, hand. they, they get sent over bad behaviour. Okay. Is not that good, so. <laughs> okay, now you've, you've signed this death nail on it, really, haven't you? The patter is going to be good during this interview. Oh so, Attic Lights, you have risen in the ranks. Um, I was actually at one of your first gigs, or possibly, maybe not the, one of the first gigs, but certainly one where all the record chiefs were at. It was in Maggie Mays in Glasgow, and I think yeah. you were probably signed round about that night. That's right. We actually signed a record deal that very night. Uh, so you were there at the beginning, Beverly? That's right. How do, how do you celebrate something like that? Obviously, you gigged, but afterwards, I mean, do you buy yourself a gold Rolex or something? Or? Oh, no, I uh, got myself, uh, I always promised myself if I ever get signed, I'd get a KFC bucket all to myself. <laughs> wow. So I went and bought myself a KFC bucket and just sat and ate <laughs> loads of chicken. That was the next day, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what I did. I'm pretty sure it involved a lot of drink, though. But she's, uh, you know, at it likes her a hard drinking and hard working band. You've yeah. got to produce songs on demand now. I mean, is that a big pressure for you? Uh, well, we've kind of known that pressure for a bit now because when we're, we're recording the album, um, we needed to write B-sides and things like that, so we had to like sit down and write some more. But it turns out the ones we wrote the B-sides were what actually became album tracks because apparently we'd been getting a wee bit better. So you're more chilled out when you're writing a B-side. I, I guess that maybe that's it actually, but uh, it basically meant that we'd got used to kind of writing. You know, we need uh, we need to write maybe three more songs, um, and we just go in and, and do them, and, and it was good. You know, good to exercise as songwriters kind of thing. And uh, on to God now. God is the name of your debut single. Um, is that May the fifth? May the fifth. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think it might be available for download just now, but uh, the actual release date is May the fifth. So. What is the meaning of God to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the song's just about. Um, a guy going to a nightclub and meeting a girl, and then the girl disappears and he's left cursing the heavens. Uh, we wrote it with a hangover, didn't we, one morning after a party? Yeah, it was it one, of those, one of those songs that just sort of uh, spewed out, you know? And it was actually really windy and stormy weather outside, so that's where the first line comes from, is if anyone uh, knows the song. But, yeah, it's just basically everyone knows the feeling, you know, you meet a girl in a nightclub, you can arrange to meet her outside and she never turns up. So, <laughs> it's happened. Kind of, you just got to God, you know? <laughs> So it's happened to me yeah. plenty of times. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's probably ended up sounding a bit sacrilegious, but it's, it's not really. It's just kind of a case of, like, ah, why me? You right, know? okay, so nothing deep and philosophical necessarily about it. Yeah, there's nothing deep and philosophical about us at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so that's your debut, and then, obviously, you're following up with a pretty strong track. Yeah, our, our next single after that is a song called Bring You Down, which... Uh, Francis, our manager uh, from Teenage Fan Club, he produced and we got Bjorn Yithling from Peter, Bjorn and John. Oh, yeah. Just kind of Swedish whistle song dudes. Uh, so he scored some strings Four on Four beards. <laughs> yeah. But he did this great, great kind of string section on it and he scored that and we recorded that. And uh, that's coming out probably in about eight weeks or something after after God's released. I'm not sure. Some Sometime around then. Uh, but, uh, that's... that's, that's uh, that's one of our favourite songs, you know, and, and we've put, thrown God out just to test the waters, let people know about us, and then bring you down, we think it will be a big song for us. Excellent. All right. And, and w working with Francis from Teenage Fan Club, has he uh, given you some advice on how to deal with things in the music industry? He's been great, yeah, because he's, well, he's been doing this for, like, 20 years, since he was about 16 or something. What age is Francis? He must be about 50. I don't know. About 50 I or 55. Admit to it. Hitting 60. But, um... Yeah, uh, he's, he's been great. He, he kind of knows the industry and he's always saying, like, just be careful with this and you know, watch certain pitfalls and, you know, be nice to daily record journalists. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, what and does that entail? Just being nice? <laughs> that, that, yeah, help me out here. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to go for dinner afterwards. Yeah, uh, we've got, we're buying you flowers, you know. I think we've got the cul de sac. Yeah. Love it. Thanks. Yeah. Can't wait. And how about uh, scouting for girls? What were they like to tour with? They they were great guys. I um, they seemed like just kind of chilled out normal guys. You wouldn't have thought. You know they're like kind of selling records in the hundreds of thousands because they were right down to earth dudes, and uh, they were good to us. You know then 
you know, they seem to enjoy us being on the tour and the crack, so it was good. Brilliant. Of course, it's a good gearing up for uh, the festival gigs that you've got coming up on the live dates. Yeah. Tell me where you're at. Probably thinking about that. Um, where are we? Pl- I think we've got a few gigs around Scotland, and is it the 6th, 7th and 8th, or the 7th, 8th and 9th of May, like mm-hmm. Edinburgh and Dundee? It's on the MySpace the website if anyone wants to check it out. Inverness as well. Inverness, yeah. Inverness. Don't forget them. Yeah, yeah, don't forget them. And uh, just lo- loads of kind of local radio stuff. We're shooting about the country. We've got a Radio 2 session in a couple of days' time down in London for, with Dermot O'Leary, so we're going to do that. And uh, beyond that, looking at the festivals, you know, I think we're looking at the, the V Festival and, and outside Leeds or whatever it is. And I know, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it, I know that you're, you're thinking about the Tea in the Park thing, but there's a reason why you might not do it this year. Yeah, because you can't play Tea in the Park two years in a row, unless you're Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're, we're kind of thinking, do we play it this year or do we wait and play it next year? But I guess that's, that's kind of, we want to leave that decision to our booking agents and the Tea in the Park guys, because they probably know more yeah, about it. they'll figure it out. Who can you not wait to meet? Uh, you'll have to answer that one first, Give. Will I? Um, <laughs> well, you who can I not wait to meet? Uh, I don't know who's doing the festival circuit this year, but there are certainly... Oh, R.E.M. R.E.M. are one of my favourite bands of all time, ever. And I would love to love to meet them and see what... See if they see to like us and give them a CD, you know? Yeah, cool. But even just to meet R.E.M. would be a dream come true for me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, if it was outside of the music world, I think it would be Noel Edmonds, because uh, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm a I'm really, really massive fan of Deal or No Deal. Um, like proper, t- like on tour, I kept missing There's it. There's no irony here. This is really? the sound check. We had to uh, deal with deal starts at like quarter past four, you know, and we always had to leave the hotel at quarter past four for the sound check, and it was quite gutting. Very upsetting Tragedy. for him. Yeah. So if I could meet uh, no Edmonds, that'd be pretty good because I couldn't spend the kind of. I think you have to spend like a month in a hotel when you're actually on the show getting to meet all the contestants mm-hmm. that's what kind of makes it work you know, you know? far too much about this show so you can do that could you I'm too busy so that I wouldn't ever get to go on the show so that, that if I could meet him like maybe for dinner or something that'd be good. 